Greetings and welcome to part one of our Super Bowl Big D podcast episodes. Before I introduce my guests, I've got big news to share. Yes, this week we've got a U.S. Olympian and a betting expert from the U.K. joining the podcast. So if anybody's interested, please subscribe to the Spunky Spectrum Sports. I promise you, you will enjoy it because... On these episodes, Alex and I will now only break down the Super Bowl, but give our picks for who will win the Super Bowl and who will win the Super Bowl most valuable player. So uh, speaking of Alex, uh, you may have heard of him once or twice. Uh, the biggest Manchester United and Miami Dolphin fan I know, Mr. Alex, welcome. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Glad to be back as always. Glad to be here. And uh, I'm ready to talk Super Bowl. Can't wait. It's the most exciting, exciting time of the year. What's the over on on how many chicken wings you'll be eating? Oh, that's – I don't even know exactly where I'm watching yet, so i got to get those plans figured out. But once I get that settled, um, it will be uh, probably over under – I don't know, a lot of them, that's for sure. Chicken wings, pizza, give me all of it. I'm ready to party. Chicken wings, maybe throw in some cheese fries, and then, make mon- and then Monday will be spent on the bike, right? Yeah, exactly. Maybe get some Kansas City barbecue going or something like that, you know? Maybe get some of uh, maybe get some of Tom Brady's protein shakes. Yeah. I don't know about that. We'll see. Yeah. But, uh, Before we talk about the Super Bowl, we've got to talk about the big blockbuster. Matthew Stafford is no longer a Detroit Lion. Yeah. I mean, how about that? You know, it seems like – for the entire history of the D- Detroit Lions organization, whenever they get a superstar player, they hold on to him. They don't let him leave, and they uh, pretty much ruin his career in Detroit, not going to a Super Bowl, as we've been talking about, or really accomplishing anything. C.C. Barry Sanders, C.C. Calvin Johnson. But Matthew Stafford, it looks like he got out of the claws of the Detroit Lions organization, if you will, and uh, he's going to sunny L.A. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a blockbuster. I was actually on Twitter when Adam Schefter uh, uh, reported the news. So I, when I was back home with my parents, I said, hey, Dad, we got a blockbuster NFL trade. So, um, I mean, what do you, what, what's your take on it? What do you think? And then you mess, yeah, you messaged me about the trade, and I'm like, what? I didn't even yeah. know what happened. And I saw the trade, and I'm like, Whoa. What? That looked like the, that looked like the James Harden trade. Yeah, it did look like a basketball trade, didn't it? It wasn't. Yeah. I mean, you don't see a lot of future first round picks two, three years in the, in the future in the NFL, and then uh, court. I mean, it's it's so hard to trade players in the NFL. It's always like a player for a pick or like something like that. So, I mean, just a combination of two star quarterbacks, uh, quarterback who's in the Super Bowl what two years ago. And a quarterback who hasn't quite been to the Super Bowl, but has been one of the top quarterbacks of the last decade. Um, you know, it's it's very rare in the NFL you see something like that. So when I mean, when I got that notification of the Schefter tweet, I, I had to look twi- read it twice because I couldn't really believe what I was seeing. And it's and I mean, it wasn't a shock that Stafford was traded because everybody knew he wanted out of Detroit. The Lions right. would look like they're. They would either draft a quarterback and potentially make a quarterback swap, whether it be Jared Goff, Jimmy Garoppolo, one of the Colt guys. Mm-hmm. But the fact that L.A. got him and gave up first-round picks in 22 and 23 so stunned me. I mean, yeah. there were rumors maybe the Rams would think about moving golf, but the fact they got out of that contract and and – Seriously upgraded at Stafford. And yeah, Stafford has not has won the same amount of playoff games as both of us combined. Yeah. Zero. But I, you know, I think that's got more to do with his surrounding cast and coaching staff than, than it has to do with his talent. Because the man the man is a fighter, the man's got all the talent in the in the world. It's just, maybe, you know, the Detroit Lions just can't seem to put a winning football team together. Maybe lack of talent and coaching staff around Stafford. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's had a couple of players here and there, but he, it just seems like that organization can never get a full, a full strong 22 going out there. I mean, it's, it's, 
you know, they've always had big players. They've always had decent players, but it's like they just can't find the unit. They can't find the, the offensive units and the defensive units to really make that team uh, progress to, to a winning culture and a winning football team. I mean, you can have all the Nadab and Kinsus, all the Reggie Bushes even for a, a year or two. I mean, Watch. Reggie. Yeah, I don't even know why I said that, but, you know, <laughs> I mean, Nadab and Kinsu was was the one where I was I was mostly thinking. I mean, they've had some talented players. It's just, it's just. I think that honestly, I think that Detroit Lions organization just has a losing culture. It's they, they've never been able to put real success out there, and I think players know that. And and they can't. I mean, they had Jim Caldwell running the the team for a little for a, a good while there, and he wasn't he wasn't the worst coach, but. I mean, whether it's just the general management not being able to to supply their coach with with enough talent to win football games or what. I mean, it just seems like that's where careers go to die. To be honest. Yeah. Now, now the Lions' uh, new head coach uh, Dan Campbell, who you who was the interim Miami Dolphin head coach for what a few yeah. games. Yeah, eight games. I think I'm. I'm very familiar, with Dan Campbell. I, I'm. I, I think. I think Detroit got a good head coach there. I mean, I know it's going to be his first real head coaching gig. He had the interim spot with Miami, and I know he's an, an assistant with New Orleans. But um, you know, I, I. The one thing about him is he's a dog. I mean, I'm sure you've seen his press conference biting kneecaps and all that. You know, a lot of people. He got a lot of mixed reactions with that, but. You know, this is football. This isn't ballerina. This isn't dance. This is this is football. And obviously, it was a um, an exaggeration. It was an a, an analogy almost. But um, you know, he's a dog. And and I'll tell you what, players like that. Players when you're when you've got a head coach who who who's mean, who doesn't want to take that stuff from anyone. I mean, players that that pumps players up. And I, I think I think Detroit has a good head coach. It's just a matter of on if a they can keep their one or two of their receivers, you know, Galladay and uh, Marvin Jones. We're not sure what's going to be happening with them. Um, possibly both of them leaving. Possibly they might be able to hold on to one. We're not sure yet. Um, they got a decent little running back and DeAndre Swift down there. Uh, I think Adrian Peterson might want to stay for another year. Who knows? Oh gosh! How, oh gosh! I mean, tell me about AP in Detroit. I mean, come on! How many times did? How many times did you yell, give the ball to DeAndre Swift instead of yeah. AP? He's like 95 years old. Right. I mean, I'm not I'm not thinking that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. But they I mean, at the very least, he's he's a good he's a good guy for Swift to learn under. And another year and another, I mean, he's one of the best running backs in in modern NFL history. I mean, at least having him uh for Swift to be able to pick his brain is is, is valuable in that sense, but you know, it's uh, we're not. It's it's going to be interesting to see how that team shapes through the draft. Um, they don't have a first round pick this year. Yeah, yeah. The the Lions do have one. I think they've got what six. I think they've got a top ten pick, top six pick. Oh, they do. You're right. That's right. That's right. I'm so used to them not having first round picks. But um, let me see. Detroit. They. Yeah, I might have gotten that mixed up in my head. No, you're but, thinking um, of the Rams not having first yeah. round picks. Yeah, I, I I mix that up in my head, but um, you know, it, well, back to my point. Then it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see how they work through the draft and see their losses in free agency and then their gains in free agency and really see how that team shapes up. But I mean, you, if you want to switch over to the Rams, that's I think going to be a bigger a, a bigger upgrade for sure. How will staff fare in LA? Because now he's actually got a competent defense. You've got Jalen Ramsey. Aaron Donald in an offense where you've got one of the best young running backs in football, Cam Akers, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup. I'll tell you what, fantasy fantasy wise, I think Cooper Cup stock goes way up. I think Robert Woods stock goes up as well. Um, I mean, I, I think I, honestly, looking at this Rams team, if if they don't lose too many pieces, and and maybe they can even add a couple, maybe maybe not. I'm not sure how their cap space is looking, especially now with with Stafford. But um, if they can sign either a player or two, or hit on a couple draft picks, maybe in the later rounds, you never know. Um, you know, I, I'm seeing NFC Championship or bust for them right now with the, with the team they have on paper. I mean, if 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 they don't make one of those last couple games of the season, I think it'll be a surprise looking at that team right now. 
And by the way, uh, this year the Tampa Bay Bucks are playing their home Super Bowl. Yeah. Next yeah. Year, Super Bowl is. Next year's in LA. LA. Yeah. You imagine never if, the Rams, if the Rams hosted the Super Bowl in that new palace? Oh. You know, it's never happened till now. Why not make it back to back, you know? But, um,. Yeah, I mean, I I think the Rams are have a, have a real shot. I'm glad we played them this year. I'm glad we don't play them next year because uh, you know we got that win. Brian Flores had a defensive masterclass game call game uh, uh, game plan for for that uh, LA Rams game. We made Jared Goff look terrible, and um, you know I'm glad we don't play them next year because I think they're a lot more dangerous with Stafford than they are with Goff. Yeah, unfortunately, my Jaguars are playing the Rams next year, so it'll be a Jalen Ramsey revenge game if you've ever seen one. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, Trevor Lawrence, man, maybe, maybe he puts one over on Jalen Ramsey. I, I'm sure that's what you're hoping for. Trevor Lawrence, DJ Talk, touchdown, and then we'll see you in L.A. for the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all no, right. I don't think that, we'll I don't be playing think Miami in the AFC Championship game. Yeah, I'll be – Jags, Dolphins, and AMC title game would be – Book it. <laughs> I don't think that – I don't uh, – Cam City and Baltimore might have something to say about it. Yeah, Baltimore I agree with you there. there. But um, want to move on from – all right, anything else to say? All right. Well, it is Super Bowl week. You know, it's uh, the greatest time of the year in the NFL circles. You know, we missed out on a Pro Bowl this year. Uh, did you watch any of that that Madden Pro Bowl? I don't uh, – I heard the NFC one, but I really didn't care. I tuned in for a minute or two, and I saw Snoop Dogg playing Madden, and I was like, all right, I'm not sure what's going on here. But, you know, I, it was disappointing because I'd been to the last two Pro Bowls in Orlando. It was, it was a lot of fun to go to. But – um. All right, well, the Pro Bowl is irrelevant. It was a video game. Who cares? It is Super Bowl week. And, uh, you know, on this episode, let's – give me a couple of your – I want to hear some of your favorite Super Bowl memories. Let's, let's start off with that. Well, if you think of Super Bowl memories, you've got to think of Marcus Allen's famous touchdown run against the Redskins from Tampa's first Super Bowl, where I think he's still spinning and then he went – and then he ran by the whole defense on his way to the end zone. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a good one. That's for sure. I mean, I, I got to think about how about, um, you know, 1972, 1973, uh, Miami Dolphins, Washington Redskins, you know. Gosh. I, the, the one thing that obviously I wasn't alive, I wasn't there for it, but the one thing that kills me about that game um, is, is – you could have won the game 14 nothing and Seth will give your premier. What were you thinking? You could have won my game 17 or Well, yeah. Yeah, you're right, 17 nothing. It would have been 17 nothing. We would have won that game 17 nothing and gone 17 and 0 for the, to perfectly just situationalize the, the undefeated season, you know. Try, Gary Permian tried to throw it, ended up uh, not working out for him. But, uh, you know, we still, we still capped off the uh, undefeated season, which leads me to one of my next favorite Super Bowl memories. Speaking of undefeated seasons, David Tyree with the helmet catch against the New England Patriots. I mean, I'll tell you what, I've never seen my team in the Super Bowl, but when that play happened, that was the happiest I've ever been in the Super Bowl. It felt like the Dolphins won the Super Bowl in that moment because – I mean, to stop the Giants, who were such big underdogs in that game, to stop Tom Brady and the Patriots from going undefeated and tainting our record, I mean, that helmet catch is immortalized in my mind. I've always said that the Giants are now my if – if the Dolphins fell off the face of the earth, I'd be a Giants fan just because of that moment. I mean, that, that, that's, that's, some, that's a play that will always stand out for me in my mind. And you could say that's the moment Eli Manning arrived because with 100-plus million people, with so many eyeballs looking and everybody thinking of Eli as Peyton's little brother, the fact Eli made that throw. Mm-hmm. Kyrie somehow Not made, made that throw. With but... Rodney Harrison all over him. Yeah. I mean, he, he should have been sacked on that play, and instead he <laughs> – he should have been sacked twice, I think, on that play. And instead, he made one of the most memorable plays in Super Bowl history. I mean, just the fight from him to stay on his feet, the ability to chuck that ball downfield. And, 
David Tyree. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if he's got a big head or what, but it, it sure helped him out on that play. He's got a big helmet. Well, he got a big helmet, that's for sure. I don't think we've ever, I don't think we ever heard from David Tyree again after that, have we? No, I don't think Tyree ever played. I don't think David Tyree ever played again. No, I mean, that's a good way to go out on if you're going to go out. I mean, that's the way to do it. But, and then yeah. the next year, how about the Santonio? And the next year, Pittsburgh Steeler fans will definitely remember Santonio Holmes toe tap against the Arizona Cardinals in Tampa's last Super Bowl. Yeah. And I don't even, I mean, as great of a play as that was, I don't even think that was the best play of the game. No way. No way. The end of the first half. I mean, James Harrison running 100 yards down the field. I mean, boy. I mean, you just you just see this big guy running down the sideline. He's He's been running 80, 90, 95 yards. Is he going to get tripped up at the one? Is he going to fall in, stretch it over the pylon, and he gets it? I mean, that man, it looked like he had to be resuscitated at halftime. <laughs> Talk he about a long you know? he, he needed a long halftime. Yeah. He physically recovered from that exhausting run. Oh, man. What's another one? I mean, so we got Santonio Holmes, James Har- slash James Harrison. Um, How about Mario Manningham against New England and Indy? And the next one, yeah. I mean, again, a- another situation where I'm like, all right. I mean, the Giants beat New England a couple years back. Like, I, I, I was it broke the undefeated season. I'm not expecting it to happen again. And then, what do you know, man? Eli Mario Manningham. I mean. They do it again. They do it again. And that, and I think after that game, Eli went – I mean, obviously the one Super Bowl was like a, a big notch in his resume. But to be able to beat Tom Brady twice in back-to-back – not in back-to-back Super Bowls, but in back-to-back times you play him in the Super Bowl, I mean, that – I think that really cemented his legacy as, as actually being like a, a, a really good quarterback in this league instead of just like – I mean, because a lot of quarterbacks won a Super Bowl and, and – it might not necess- it might not necessarily mean they're Hall of Famers or, or, or an elite quarterback or or even a, a very, very good quarterback. But I mean to be able to be Tom Brady in his prime, really, I mean, or at least up and coming to his prime, I mean, it's just it's 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 tough to do and, and props to Eli for doing it twice. And Pete and Pete in the house that Peyton built too from one manning to another, right? Yeah. Um, what are, what else is there? I mean, I obviously one of the most uh, one of the most upsetting to me in recent histories, but I think one of the most exciting Super Bowls that I've seen is is that that Seattle New England. I mean, how you don't give it to Marshawn Lynch on the one yard line? I mean, that that play has got to be burned in Seattle Seahawks memories for the rest of their lives. I said it. I said it to this. I said it back then, and I say it today. I don't think Seattle made. I don't think Seattle made the wrong play call. I think the play was executed incorrectly because with yeah. the clock situation, where it was Seattle needed to throw the ball. Unfortunately, I mean, they had twenty seconds. Unfortunately, they had twenty seconds when that play started. You can run a play and get back to the line and run one more in that amount of time. Unfortunately, Russell Wilson found Malcolm Butler, who became synonymous with making the making the most important interception in Super Bowl history, and making a meme out of Robert. Uh, 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 oh my God. Sherman. Robert Sherman? No. Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman. How did I forget his name? And making a meme out of Richard Sherman with his mouth drop. But um And speaking God. of defensive stops, how about the greatest the greatest tack on Super Bowl history when Mike Jones stopped the Kevin Dyson on the one yep. yard line when the greatest show on Turf St. Louis Rams beat the Tennessee Titans. I mean the sixteen. Were you that, in the just... for that game? Uh, what year was that? Uh, January 2000. I was four. <laughs> but uh, no, I wasn't even four. I was three, almost four. So, I mean, I wasn't really coherent enough to uh, remember it. But, I mean, everyone's seen the video, uh, the, the the picture of the reach. And, and I mean, that's got to be a heartbreaker, too. I mean, on the flip side, in the oh, well, I guess it is on the offensive side. But, man, I mean... 
That was Kurt Warner, right? Kurt Warner in the Rams. Yep. Um, I mean, yeah. That I mean, just just that image alone is. is there's so it's so crazy how Super Bowls really they can kind of come down to just one image. It's it's like, I mean, the the Malcolm Butler uh, with the with the interception or the the reach or, or uh, the the San Antonio Holmes catch in the end like the toe tap. It's just. David Tyree helmet catch. It's crazy how all these Super Bowls can kind of just be defined by one picture. And it's, it's really cool to look back on and, and see the history of, of the greatest sporting event in sports. I mean, in North American sports, I'd say at least. But Yeah, I mean, I, I mean the fact that t- Tennessee broke my Jaguars hearts three times. I mean, Jackson was 14-0 and 0 except against Tennessee where we went 0-3. Unless that could have been LA, St. Louis and my Jags in the Super Bowl. Yeah. The Titans broke my heart. Yeah. How about – how about? Uh, oh, no, don't tell. No, I'm not going there. You probably don't know where I'm going here. But this was, again, before my time. So, I, I think I've got the name right. Greg Norman? Buffalo Bills? No, Scott Norwood. Scott Norwood. There it is. How do you I, – I mean, I'm sorry, but – I would rather not make a Super Bowl than go to four in a row and lose all four of them. I mean, I just – you might be able to debate me on that. I'm probably wrong about that. I mean, I, uh, considering I have never seen my team in the Super Bowl, I'd probably take that back. But, I mean, just – I mean, you lose one, you're like, all right, we still got a good team. Like, hopefully we'll make it next year. You make it next year. Oh, man, we're in the Super Bowl again. Lose it. Ah, oh, that sucks. You know, we lose back to back. But we still got a good team. Next year, make the Super Bowl again. Okay, there's no way we lose three in a row. Lose it again. And then the next year you go to another one and you lose it again. I mean, I just – the amount of agony that Buffalo Bills fans must have felt those four years. And then to miss it on a, on a field goal wide right, I mean – that's 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 a memory that Buffalo Bills fans are are hoping that Josh Allen could erase very soon because I don't know if they're cursed or what, but in in uh, by the way, did you see the ESPN thirty for thirty a film about the uh, Super Bowl Buffalo Super Bowls? I don't think I have. I want to watch it though. That sounds really good. Yeah, but uh, in Scott Norwood's defense, there were eight seconds left before that play. Thinking of about that moment, the Bills could have run another play, maybe mm. gotten five, seven, eight more yards. Kelly could have found found Andre Reed, Don Beebe, uh, who's the other James Lofton. Heck, he could even found Thurman Thomas coming out Thurman. of the backfield, get five, seven yards to make the kick. And secondly, remember for that Super Bowl in Tampa, the game was played on natural grass. The, Bills and Giants were played on artificial turf, so there was a major difference kicking from the gra- grass to the turf. And not saying 46, 47 yards, 47, 46 yard kick is easy, but with 100, with the whole world watching, uh, I could see yeah. that somebody would get a little tight. I don't know, though. I mean, that's. When you sign up for the job as an NFL kicker, you're hoping for those situations. You want to be, you want the Super Bowl to come down to you. I mean, kickers, I, uh, kickers get a lot of, uh, I think, unnecessary disrespect around the league. You know, it's an easy position. All you got to do is kick it. How do you miss? I mean, I, uh, uh, being a soccer player, I relate to kickers. And, like you know, and I, I, I put a lot of respect on the kickers, and I know how hard of a job it is. And but at the end of the day, I mean because you get a little bit of disrespect as, as a lot more of the other positions do. I mean, when you have the opportunity to win a game and not only win a game, win a Super Bowl, I get that there's pressure, but I mean, that's gotta be the moment you live for. And I mean, whether you're kicking on turf or grass, I mean, you, you played 17 games. I'm sure you probably kicked on a, on a mix of them throughout the year. I don't know. I mean, you gotta, I, I just think you gotta make that kick anything under 50, you gotta make it. But you know, who yeah. am I? I'm sitting here on my couch talking to you. So, I mean, Adam Vinatieri is going to the Hall of Fame for making two game winning Super Bowl kicks. Yeah, I guess it's just the ice in the veins or something. I'm not sure, but uh, you know, let's see. There's a re- hmm. there's a reason why some guys are great in the clutch, like Tom Brady and others. 
A.B. Holmes is so great. I mean, the fact Aaron Rodgers has only played in one Super Bowl stuns me. Yeah, it's – I mean, that's – it's – there's no it's so hard to to understand how how that's happened I mean he's such an elite quarterback and it seems like he always has the team around him but for some reason like you said I mean some guys have it and some guys might not when it comes down to clutch or crunch time so this concludes part one of our Super Bowl episode next Alex and I will will debate which team represent which team will win the Super Bowl and uh, give our favorite prop bets and maybe even think back to uh, the first meeting between these teams. All right. Thanks for having me again, Dylan, and I'll be uh, talking to you shortly.